Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT where we live these days. Um, we're taking a slight segue. In the previous few videos we have been uh, problem solving for our automation of how we want especially our spells and things to work. Uh, just to break the routine a little bit we're going to jump over and look at a completely different add-on module that we've not looked on before. Uh, it is a big one and it's a scary one sort of because <laughs> it's very complex. Uh, we're going to be looking at MIDI QOL, so that's the MIDI quality of life. Um, and it, basically, it's designed to do quite a lot of automation tasks for us. The good thing is that we can automate pretty much everything we want to, but also we have a lot of choices so that we can select what to automate and what not to automate. And that's one of the things that makes it really complex, is there is lots of options and things. Now we don't want to just run MIDI uh, QOL on its own because it is designed to interact really well with some other um, modules as well. So if I just go to my manage modules here, um, I'm going to only show you my active modules. Thank you for the person who left the comment pointing out that that make life easier for you guys. So um, we can see I have got in here, um, where is it, MIDI QOL right in the middle here. Now also with that, we need the lib wrapper, we need the socket lib, we need those for most of the add-ons because they help the add-ons modules talk to Foundry itself. We've got Dthread's convenient effects because we still want those. We've got the DAE, so dynamic active effects, which works very well with MIDI QOL. Uh, they're actually written by the same person, so they're designed to work hand in hand. Uh, Item macro, I don't think we need at the moment, but that is something that we will get to in a future video, probably, assuming this little experiment is uh, worth pursuing. Um, Monk's token bar, we haven't looked at that one either. That's going to do a couple of things for us that just, again, it works well with MIDI QOL. Simple calendar, because that helps us track time and stuff. We're going to look at that separately anyway at some point. Time's up, we already know about, and token magic effects. So the reason why we need token magic effects is because that helps MIDI QOL talk to Dfred's convenient effects um, and be able to apply those things as and when. Um, so that's what we're running with for this one. Absolutely, we can add in some of those other modules to complement and bring back some of those flavors, but this is where we want to focus on for this introductory look at. I've got a feeling this might be a few videos this one. Okay so let's save those module settings. Hello save. I'll just close it I haven't changed anything that's fine. Okay so if I go to configure settings here a couple of things we need to do. Um, we need to go into and this is where it starts to get a bit scary. Go into MIDI QOL. Uh, and you're starting to think, oh, actually, it's not too bad, is it? Not too many things to do here. Uh, this is going to become very personal to individuals of how you want to set things up. The really important one is this one in the middle here, near the top, enable role automation support. So MIDI QOL has the ability to, uh, to make our attack rolls and roll just roll for us. Um, and get them out of the way nice and quick for a DM. We probably don't want to waste time. I would like I like my dice. Um, I've got the switched off at the moment. I like my dice though. Uh, but that's not necessarily quick for the game. I would like the players to use those. And I've said this before. I want my players to roll their own dice. Um, that's a big part of the fun is rolling your own dice, waiting to see what the results are, see what happens because of that. Um, so MIDI QOL, we enable to activate automatic dice rolling. But like I say, we can customize who that actually applies for. If we leave that switched off, none of the automation will work for any of it. So we need that on to say, yes, yes, support it, and then we will select who it applies to. Um, we can do things like fast forward ability rolls. So what that means is it just gives you the result. Uh, again, I don't want that. Dice rolling is a big part of uh, Dungeons and Dragons, um, especially if you're old school or just old like me. Um, we've got a couple of options here about, you know, when players whisper to each other, we can make sure the DM gets to see those regardless. That's up to you. Um, 
hiding private roles because Foundry does have this tendency to go, oh, it's a private role. I'll tell them that you've made a private role. Uh, so you might want to turn that off and really, really, really hide them. Uh, I have no problem if my players know that I'm doing secret roles uh, because it creates a bit of tension for them. Uh, and sometimes I will just roll dice just to wind them up. Um, you know, make interesting noises like, hmm, oh, okay, righto. Anyway, sorry, what were you doing? Um, just keep them on their toes, keep them thinking what's happening behind the scenes because there are other creatures, the NPCs and things going on in the world around them. It's not just isolated for them. Um, and there's a few options here about, you know, the way that you apply critical damage, etc, etc. You can look through those on your own or we'll be here forever. The big thing is this top thing called workflow settings. Okay, we're going to get to that in a moment. Uh, just before we do, I want to have a quick look at this targeting confirmation box because this one's relatively small, relatively easy. So if we click on this, uh, oh, that wasn't the option I thought it was. <laughs> As I say, I've not used this before. Uh, the option I was thinking this is, is in the workflow. Okay, let's go straight to the workflow. This is the scary bit. Let's make this nice and well as big as we can. I'm going to move move the game settings over there, so we're concentrating on this one. All right, so you're thinking there's not that many. If we look across the top, we've got configuration for the game master, for the player, this workflow thing, which there's lots of concentration, reactions, miscellaneous mechanics, rules, quick settings, etc. Oh, so there's tons of them. Now the first thing is actually go to the last tab, quick settings. So what you can see in here is we have that ability to choose immediately some default settings of how we might want our setup. So all roles manual. If you click that, it will automatically, yeah, in fact, let's click that. This is what it will do. It will turn off all of these prompts and checks and things. I don't want to apply that, thank you, because I've been through and had a little look at some of the settings myself anyway. But you can use this uh, GM attack damage automatic uh, and set the player attack damage to manual, which is two basic things that I would kind of start with. Um, but that's not the whole end of the story. Uh, MIDI QOL will also help with processing reactions. So some things that you can do as reactions, such as casting the shield spell, it will prompt the player and say, hey, you've just been attacked. You have this as a reaction option. Do you want to use it? Um, it's up to you whether you want that on or not. Uh, concentration automation. So if you cast a spell that requires concentration, will it track that for you? Will it prompt the player to make, or and the NPCs, to make concentration checks um, when they get hit, take damage? It, again, up to you how you want to track that. I think it's quite nice that it prompts for that. Uh, reminds people, uh, certainly as the GM, trying to keep track of all of those things can get complex when you've got a lot of players, especially as they get higher level and there's all sorts of different things going on. Um, so yeah, you can enable that, you can disable that, etc. All right, Whew, lots of things in there. We're not going to go through every one of these because A, there's a lot, um, B, I don't know what most of them do, uh, and C, it's not very interesting, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll have a look at a couple of these um, and then we'll kind of run through a couple of little scenarios, see how it works, see what's working for us and then go, oh, what do we like that? Do we not like that? And then we can go and find the setting, tweak those and learn which settings are actually going to do what. So let's see the results of those settings. Okay, if we start in the GM1 here, auto attack roll. So that means when we say attack that character it will automatically roll the dice for us I do want that on for the game master it makes it nice and quick um, when we are using casting a spell or we're using an ability that has a certain amount of charges things like lay on hands and stuff like that we can get it to automatically use that spell slot up so the NPC will use up their spell slots because remember this is the GM stuff um, and it will reduce those for us rather than giving us a box saying, do you want to reduce it? It will just go, I'm just reducing it. You told me to do it automatically. And we can do that again with resources and stuff. Or we can leave that off. Um, and as a GM, if you might want to fudge stuff, you might want to accidentally sneak them an extra heal to make the combat more interesting, whatever. You can just choose to leave that off. 
Let's leave it off for now. Uh, yeah. Uh, auto fast forward attack. So that just means it just does it quickly. It doesn't mess around dice rolls and all of that. It just shows you the results nice and quickly in a game for a dungeon master. It might not be as interesting, but it's probably much more efficient. Auto roll damage. So again, it will, if it auto attacks and it hits, will it automatically roll the damage as well? You can say it will always roll the damage. It will only roll the damage if it's needed. It will only do it for saving throws, uh, etc. Uh, let's stick that onto always. We can just see how it works. We can change it later. Uh, auto fast forward damage again. So it just goes straight to it and, and does what we need, which is great. Uh, all damage critical dice rolled for NPC hits are average results. So you know um, in 5th edition, most monster stat blocks, they come with, oh yeah, that damage is D6 plus 2. And it says, oh, that average damage is 4. So you can just say, always only ever applies 4. Now, I'm not a fan. I want, I want to roll those dice, especially as it's really, really quick using this. Um, I don't want to use average results. I think that's quite boring, to be honest. Um, remove some of the excitement. Um, remove chat card buttons after roll. So normally if we do an attack, we would get in the chat over here. Let's just clear this. So as well as having a little play before starting the video. Um, it would come up and pop and you've got your attack and your damage buttons. So what this is basically saying is, well, if it's automatically rolling for you, should we remove the button to do the attack roll for you? Because it's already happened. So again, we can turn that on, off, whatever we want to do. Um, Game Master rolls detail hiding. Okay, so again, you can look at hiding stuff. We can look at those a bit later. Uh, hide the Game Master attack damage saving throw. 3, uh, 3D dice rolls. Okay, so we'll ignore that. Don't necessarily know what some of these mean. Add fake dice to GM dice so nice rolls. So what that means is if we're using dice so nice, which we like, but I've got them switched off for this, um, it will just uh, chuck in extra dice, fake dice with it. So the players don't necessarily know what's actually being rolled, which are the important dice in there. It's a bit mean, isn't it? <laughs> But again, if you want to show them you rolling the dice, you might want to use that. Uh, personally, not going to bother. Uh, so that's how I'm going to have my GM1 set up for the moment. I'm going to jump to player. Not too much in here. Now this is where we can, if we want to, have the player's attacks auto-resolve. So when the character says, oh, right, target that person, they click their, I don't know, their longsword button, it will automatically roll and it will automatically... Um, it will automatically roll to hit and it will automatically roll their damage and stuff. Do I want to do that? No, I don't. I want my players to roll. So I'm going to leave that off. Auto consume resource. I'm going to leave that off for players. I want them to manage that themselves. Auto roll damage. No, I want the players doing that. I don't want to fast forward their rolls, etc. I want to leave the players in control of their own roles and things. It's just my preference. Okay, the way I run my games. Uh, right, a couple other things to have a little look at. There is this reactions tab here. So I mentioned reactions processing. Um, do we want to check player reactions? In other words, do we want to say, oh, hang on a minute, you've been hit, but you've got a shield spell available as a reaction. Do you want to use it? Um, we can turn that on off. Uh, check the NPC. I'm going to put that on. Okay. So if the player character attacks one of our, my NPCs, rather than me trying to remember what every NPC has in the way of reactions, um, MIDI QOL could just prompt me and go, oh, by the way, did you realise this person can do something? Like, oh, yeah, OK. Um, and again, that's only a prompt. Uh, and if the player or GM doesn't react to that prompt within 30 seconds, it will automatically assume that's not happening. Fine. Um, Show chat prompt for reactions. Let's turn that on for this. Show attack roll. Um, allow any re uh, allow any reaction spell to be used. Okay, let's turn that on because I think that should be things like shield because that's a reaction spell. Um, enforce reactions. Enforce bonus actions. Uh, record attacks of opportunity. Mm. When an actor makes an attack and it's not their turn in the combat tracker, mark their reaction as used. Yeah, I think I will do that to see how that works because you only get that one attack of opportunity under normal circumstances. So it will go, hang on a minute, you've used it this round. You can't use it again. Let's leave that on. 
Okay, another one we want to look at is concentration. So under concentration, do we want to enable this? As I mentioned before, it means that when your character is concentrating on a spell, it will track that for you. Uh, forced, force a concentration save when damage is taken. Remove concentration on failed concentration save. Now, what does it mean forced? Let's put that on. Hopefully that doesn't mean it's going to auto roll. Or hopefully it's just going to tell them you have to roll this. Uh, remove concentration when you're incapacitated or dead, unconscious, petrified, paralyzed, stunned or stuff. Uh, yes, that's totally appropriate. Uh, a single concentration tack. Okay, so yeah, so if you're taking multiple damage, etc. Uh, temporary hit point concentration check. If ah right, so if you lose temporary hit points, should you make a concentration check because you haven't actually taken damage, only your um, temporary ones are. So you can turn that on, off, whatever you think. Uh, I think even if it's temporary hit points, if you've been smacked around the head with a hammer, that's the co that's what the concentration check is for, not necessarily the amount of damage you took. Uh, and remove the concentration when effects are removed. So in other words, if you've got uh, if you've got bless cast and you're you're having to concentrate on that, when that spell ends, we should be we're no longer concentrating. Um, so effects and templates. So once that bless expires, our concentration should expire automatically. Okay, I'm going to save those couple of changes we've made. I'm going to go back in there just because we need to look at this one, the beast, the workflow. So I'm not going to do a huge amount of changes in here, but this essentially is, we've looked at player specific, we've looked at concentration specific, reaction specific, and the, the game master specific. But this one here, the workflow, is the real chunky bread and butter of the whole thing that sits at the core of mini QOL. Uh, and again, I don't know how a lot of these work in practice. I only can kind of go by what it's telling me. Um, and while there are some tutorials and videos out there, some of them a bit outdated. And the reason I've not looked at uh, MIDI QOL until now is with the update to the D&D game engine to 3.0 and a couple of the changes that came with that, MIDI QOL was not updated and was not functioning with that very well at all. Uh, they have just released a beta version. Uh, I can't obviously complete it because they're still making changes to the game engine um, 3.0.3 at the moment. Um, so they're going to have to keep tweaking it. But there is a beta version which should be, at the moment, as of right now, stable. I would say don't up, don't ru start running a game using this at the moment until it stabilizes a bit with that 3.0 engine. Um, just because you don't want to be trying to run a game and count all the little niggles and stuff. So, okay, targeting. Auto target on template drawn. What that means is if you cast something like Fireball, it's going to give you a template that you're going to place onto your map. Any actor, so any token that sits under that, should they be automatically targeted by that spell? My answer is yeah. If they're in the area of Fireball, they should be making you know, their deck saves and taking damage. So you can turn that off. You can say always... Um, do walls block firewall? I think so. Um, and are we going to ignore the dead? So walls will block that template, uh, you know, and prevent characters the other side of the wall from getting affected. Um, and we're going to ignore dead characters. I'm not going to ignore incapacitated. If you're incapacitated and you're in the middle of a fireball, you're still going to take damage. Uh, auto remove the placed template on spell expiry. Yes, we want to do that. Okay. Once we've placed that, that fireball template, once that entangle spell has completed, we want that to disappear as well. And remember, we're using times up. So times up will trigger that to say that's no longer active. Auto target for range spells and targets. So again, uh, we've got a lot, lot of options here. Um, I'm going to go with um, walls blocked, ignore dead again. Uh, requires targets to be selected. So if you're casting a spell or making an attack, um, you get to make that decision on whether it um, whether you are forced to select targets or not. So I want it to force to select targets only in combat and no other times. OK. Um, yeah, so apologies for that minor interruption. 
Um, okay, yeah, so required targets uh, to be selected. Um, I only want them selected in combat. So that means that if I try to make an attack um, or cast something and I haven't selected targets, it will prompt and say, hey, you've not targeted anybody. Uh, same as weapons attack single target, uh, generally speaking. Yes, notice it says with no target specification, they can only attack one target. So that doesn't mean if you've got a weapon that can do multiple uh, attacks or rather attack multiple characters at the same time you can still do that uh, specials auto apply item effects yes um, we can do that we can turn it off again we can got these choices of how to automate these different things and apply convenient effects so this is the D threads convenient effects here so we can apply those when they match the name of the item used um, and as you can see we can say don't apply them apply the item effects and if the item doesn't have an effect on it, then use D threads. Apply D threads. If there isn't a D threads effect, then use the item effect if it has one. Or apply D threads and the item effects both at the same time. So if you've got an animation attacked to, let's say, um, you've got an animation attached to the spell bless, you cast bless. What do you want it to do? Do you want to use the animation that's attached to the item bless or do you want to use d threads convenient effect when you cast bless or do you want it to play both that's essentially what it's asking um, and when you think of things like a flaming longsword or something like that you might have the effect attached to the item um, but you might but d threads may also pick up and go oh hang on a minute i've got an effect that would be applicable there do you want it to apply that uh, i'm going to go for d threads by default um, that way I get consistent D threads animations for or effects rather for all of my items and then I can just create additional D threads effects oh, it's a bit of a mouthful okay right again we can change that later if it's not working the way we want hits auto check if the target hits um, hits the target sorry if the attack hits the target I want it to do this um, and we've seen that actually it kind of does this already, doesn't it, in the 3.0 game engine. Um, if we select a target, we make an attack roll, um, it will tell us what the roll was and what the armor class was we were attempting to hit. So it's kind of doing that anyway. Um, but I, we can say whether the who can see that. So I want it just to be the, the, the DM. And I want a separate attack per target. Um, display how much it attacks or misses. It's up to you. I don't want it. So those are the only ones we're going to look at for the moment. Hang on a minute. I didn't scroll down, did I? I've got all of these other things here. Let's have a quick look at these because actually saving throws is in here and that's a useful one. So for saving throws, we can use auto checks for these as well. Um, so we can turn those off. Everybody can see the results. I'm going to have them on, but the game master only sees the results um, because I'd rather describe that. And also, if you're... If you've been a DM for any length of time, you know sometimes you need to fiddle things slightly in the background to keep the game entertaining. Um, I have no problem with killing off player characters. No problem whatsoever. What I don't like is killing off player characters purely because of a dice roll. If player characters die, it's normally because they have refused to run away when they should have done, or they've done something completely stupid, or they've refused to listen to advice. Well, that's kind of like point two, isn't it? Um, so I am happy to let them die if they put themselves in situations that allows that. Um, but I don't want them just, you know, you walk into the tavern, you bump into somebody and they throw a punch. Oh, it happens to be a critical hit. Oh, and it happens to kill you outright. That's like, where's the fun in that? So sometimes we fudge those things. So only I want to see those. Uh, display the DC for the saving throw. Yes. Um, display if it's advantage disadvantage this is interesting search the item um, description so for things like if it says you take half damage on a save etc yeah I wanted to check that and the default saving um, throw multiplier if you make your save default is to take half damage so if it can't find anything else telling it exactly what it does it will default to half damage um, Prompt players to make their saving throws. Now, no prompt at all. So the DM is doing the legwork. Um, 
it will automatically roll their saves for them and just show it. You could choose to have that. Again, I like my players to roll their own dice. We could use let me roll that for you, which is a mod we've not looked at. Uh, let me roll that for you and query. We could just pop it in the, in the chat message or we could use Monk's Token Bar, which is what we're doing, or Ripper's Epic Rolls, which we've not looked at. So we're going to use Monk's Token Bar, and that will actually lead us to looking at that as well. Okay, prompt the Game Master to make rolls. Um, I'm not sh really sure what the difference between linked and unlinked is, but I've got Monk's for both of those. Uh, and again, there's a delay there, so if the player hasn't responded to that, that request after a while, um, it will do that for them automatically. We also have some of these damage ones here. Um, so enhanced damage dialogue. Um, not sure what that does. Let's leave it on. Apply damage to the target. So here we can say if the if we if the monster the goblin makes an attack roll and he hits the target, do we automatically reduce their hit points? So this can be a labour saving from the point of view of instead of the characters having to go into their sheet and apply their own damage and things, we could do that automatically. And certainly as the DM, having to update the monsters with their hit points after every attack, especially things like, you know, oh, fireball, hang on a minute, give me 20 minutes to go around every one of these goblins. and <laughs> It could be a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so I don't really want to do that. I'm happy for this to auto apply and um, we've got some options in there how we do it. Now I'm going to go with the one that appears to give the most uh, output in the chat so I can work out what it is I want to actually have on there. Uh, show the player's damage card. Okay so again if we want to have that I'm going to have it all on. That means my chat is going to be really verbose in combat with lots and lots of things in there and then I'll work out which bits aren't actually helpful and then switch them off when I can find the right setting. Okay, display the damage, the player damage card. If the roll damage does not match the applied damage for some target, yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Let's leave it on. Um, it might be to do with damage reduction and stuff. Uh, talking of which, damage immunities. So, do we want to apply them? So, if your Paladin is swinging his big two-handed sword of doom and he's hitting things, and actually they've got some kind of damage reduction or resistances. Um, do we want to apply those resistances? Hell yeah. If we're going to auto-apply damage, we have to automatically calculate those resistances as well. Or otherwise, we're going to be hitting it for 20 damage when it should only be 10, for example. Um, might as well just take those resistances off of, the, off of the enemies. Okay, so I'm going to have that. Immunity reduces the damage to zero. Resistances reduce it to half. And vulnerabilities double the damage. That's exactly as per rules. Um, and here we can set our preference for the order that it reduces stuff. Does it reduce the damage through reduction and then the saving throw and then damage resistance? Or is it the saving throw, half damage, then damage reduction, damage resistance? I go for damage reduction saves, then damage resistance myself. Um, I'm not sure if that's technically correct. I think it's probably slightly more dynamic if not technically correct okay um and we're just in the last couple here this is about magic weapons and things i'm not exactly sure how this is working um so we'll come back and test this at another time okay right enough settings Whew, i told you it's a big one isn't it and there's so many things in there we're not too sure what it does okay let's do an example little combat i haven't got my combat carousel uh, uh, in so we're going to be doing it the old ways so let's select these three poppets, right click and put them all into combat. They're now all in the combat tracker. I'm going to right click on that combat encounters crossed swords to pop this out so I can have my chat alongside it. Um, because I'm lazy, I'm going to roll initiative for all of them. And here we go. Here's their initiatives. And it looks like we're starting with this individual who happens to be a cleric. So let's do some rolls. And let's see what is going to work and what is not going to work. Let's begin combat. And we've got a little bit of music there in the background. Right, well, we've got our mace. But I want to start off with, let's start off with a spell. We're about to go into combat. We know that. We're not in combat range. Let's not bless everybody. Let's cast Shield of Faith on ourselves. Okay, so we've got our token selected and we're targeted. Do I want to consume that spell? Yes, I do. All right. So several things happened just then. 
if you were watching the token, if you missed it, rewind the video slightly and go look at that. We've now got this glowing animation. I didn't set that up. That's just happening automatically because of the, the mods in the background. We've got this glowing animation showing that we've got a spell effect on. We have the D threads uh, has been attached here. Now the macros and everything that I wrote for D threads, it's in a different um, a different world, game world. So I haven't done anything with macros in this one at all. This is all purely mods are doing. So we've applied our shield of faith there uh, and we are concentrating because we told it to do that. And we can see over here, shield of faith. We've applied shield of faith here. It tells us this here again. I said it was going to be verbose and it's applied concentrating. Woohoo! So it's done all that really nice and smooth. Let's hope everything goes that smoothly, right? Uh, and if we check over on the character sheet on the left-hand side, we can see armor class 14 due to scale mail, plus two because of the shield, and plus two because of the shield of faith. So that has applied lovely jubbly. Okay, good, right, that's your action, you're done. We're now going to move to Test, who is this random person I threw together. Um, while they are a cleric slash wizard, they've got no abilities. Uh, so they are going to be just using their flail. So let's step into combat. We're going to, it's already targeted. Uh, we're going to target Acra and we're going to make a flail attack. So watch the chat as I click this. Three, two, one. Boom. Everything happens. So this is where we are from test one, halfway down our chat. We clicked flail. It is still showing us these attack and damage buttons because we didn't turn those off in the options, but it's automatically made our attack for us. It rolled a four and we're not getting any bonus to that. It's automatically rolled the damage for us, even though that's not going to be applied. It has showed us that that did not hit the target armor class of 18. Um, and it's given us this extra card at the bottom here um, about uh, the fact it hasn't updated the hit points. Now we could go, oh, you know, I don't really care. I've got my damage roll. I could still apply that damage roll if I wanted to. Or if it had automatically applied it, I could undo it. So this is just like an, an extra safety thing, again, it's one of the options, where we can use that to go, oh, hang on a minute, I, I'll, instead of auto-apply, give me this chat card, and then I will just make sure that I'm happy with it before I click apply, or, oh, it's automatically applied it, and it's not what I wanted, undo that, okay? So I would suggest you are going to auto-apply, or have this. I don't think both is useful. Um, yeah, we're going to leave it on for now. We will hone our setup um, as we go. All right, well done, test one. You failed to do anything useful. Uh, we're now on to Zana's go, okay, with the wonderful initiative of two. Um, so, Zana is a wizard, full stop. Now, the most sensible thing for wizards to do is make sure you're targeting yourself, and we're going to be casting that mage armor. All right, so cast that, and again over here. Cast Mage Armor, and we've applied that Mage Armor effect straight away um, from D Threads. Look, look, look here. I've got the Effects button. So I'm finding it's really intermittent, this Effects button from 3.0. Um, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. It is on this occasion, but I'm auto applying the effect. I don't need to use that Effects button. And to be honest, while it's really useful having that there to go and click it, MIDI QOL is just making that happen. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, I haven't even got to do that one. Well, actually, it's two clicks, isn't it? A click to open it, a click to apply it. Actually, MIDI QOL is zero clicks, just doing it. Okay, brilliant. We've now got our Shield of Faith. Uh, sorry, our um, Mage Armor. And if we hover over our character sheet, we can see that um, our base has gone up to 13. Um, we plus our Dexterity for our 14. So that's good. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's just do a couple more rounds um, and then we'll call this video to an end uh, and then we can look at some more complex changes. All right, so let's say, Acra, um, you're up. Should we use our beloved bless spell? Should we do that? Let's, let's do that. So we want to bless ourselves uh, and let's bless our wizard as well. We're all going to pick on test one in this. Let's cast bless. So we've targeted who we want. I'm already concentrating. Do I want to end concentration and continue? 
So it's giving me this warning saying, hey, hey, well, well, you can't do both. So as a player, I can go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. No, I'll change my mind. I'll do something else. Or proceed. So that's really, really nice. It's kind of reminding of the game mechanic there, which is one of those things that potentially can get easily forgotten. Okay, let's not do that. Let's change our mind. Um, let's do a... What I, what I want to do first, resources. I want to display um, always for everyone. I want to have these hit points displayed for this one. All right, I always does that. Because update token. There we go. I want to have the hit points displayed. So Acra, I want to do that melee attack. Now there's a good chance because we've got quite low armor class over here we might hit. So watch our target token, test one. Watch the health bar. I'm going to click mace. Oh look, because that character has the shield spell. Okay, got to be quick here. First of all, at the top of this window, can you see that there is a number counting down? Yeah, so they've got this amount of time, 30 seconds it was, we set in the settings for them to choose to use this or not. All right, so I'm going to say no. And then it resolved everything else. Well, lots happened just then. <laughs> so Acra made their mace attack. Their mace attack got a 17. That was going to hit our test one. But it automatically gave us, or gave test one, like, oh, you're being attacked. Do you want to use your reaction to cast shield? And if the player's not paying attention and they're not responding within that 30 seconds to say yes, it would automatically time out, and therefore they've missed that opportunity to react. So depending on your players, you might say 30 seconds is quite a long time for for them to react. It's like, well, no, am I going to make it 10 seconds? If you're not paying attention, if you're not reacting within 10 seconds and making that, then your character's not reacting quick enough either. You could do that. It's up to you. So we decided not to use our shield. So it resolved the rest of the combat where we did a really, really poor roll and inflicted four damage. And look at the health bar on test one. It automatically applied that. Okay, so again, I've got the DM set up so that it whizzes through this stuff really quite quickly um, because I don't want, as a DM, to spend ages doing one goblin's attack when I've got another 12 goblins queued up behind it. So really nicely, quickly resolved and applied damage to the character. So I can then focus on describing what happened um, rather than anything else. So that was pretty neat. Okay, test is your go. Uh, so what do you actually have access to, test? Did I give you any spells? Burning hands, majors. Should we try a spell? Should we try burning hands? Um, let's try it on... Let's try it on our wizard down here with his mage armor. More likely to hit. Okay, so we're going to cast burning hands. From this character, we've selected our target. Cast spell, and it's asking us to place a measured template. Okay, yes, we're going to cast it, and here is our template. Now, my next question is going to be, how do I rotate this? <laughs> I'm sure it's really easy. How do I rotate the template? Uh, oops, a daisy. Oh, I accidentally cancelled that. But look, it gives me the option to replace the measured template. Um Dag nabbit. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't play with templates. Let me let me get rid of select select it. Don't want the circle template. Thank you. Obviously I've botched that up. Um but I can click it back in here. My <laughs> Should we just attack the cleric? Because I appear to have forgotten how to ro rotate the template. Let's just attack the cleric. So we're going to attack here. So it's going to give us our... Oh, blimey. That's ridiculous. Mouse wheel. Mouse wheel up and down. We'll rotate it. Right. That's what we want to do. So we're going to cast it from there. We are going to cast it out, mage. There we go. So I'm going to stick that template down. Now, in theory, that should auto-target that individual. Uh, and now we can do our uh, damage. And it's going to do uh, damage fast for us, in theory. Something's not quite right. Hmm. 
Okay. Okay, so the damage fast thing isn't working for whatever reason. That's probably because I've messed it up by not being able to do a template properly. All right, let's uh, tell you what. Let's test this a slightly better, shall we? Let's move you over here. Let's ignore the um, reaction. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> Attack of opportunity. Oh, my poor brain. It's not working well. Right, we're going to try that again. We're going to cast Burning Hands. Uh, discard the previous. Okay, get rid of the previous. Um, so yeah, we struggled trying to get rid of the template that I'd already deleted. Right. So, Burning Hands. Yes, place the measured template. Right, I can get one or the other. So when I notice I'm doing this, look at it selecting target. So let's aim it at our wizard. Let's get him full blast, yeah. Click this. Right. Now this has done it. So me messing up with the template interrupted the flow. So it has automatically rolled the damage, which is 10. Uh, it's asking here for a dexterity saving throw now um, for these, these characters. So it happens to only be Zana. Okay, now this is part of the um, the other add-on that we put in, that I've forgotten which one it was called. Um, oh, this is the Monk's Token Bar, is what's doing this. Okay, so now it's flagging up and saying, oh, Zana, you've got to make your roll, and they can click on there and make their roll, or I can roll all of them for them, etc., or just NPCs, because, of course, they could potentially fireball, have lots of things in there. All right, so let's roll that. For Zana, it's a normal roll. Okay. <laughs> so that was a really bad saving throw. Um, Zana did not make that saving throw at all. Took half damage. Half of 10 is 5 damage. Um, and uh, Zana appears to be dead. Now what it's not automatically done. Now that template should... Dis Let's move on turn template automatically disappeared okay that's what I wanted to move move on to the next thing so that template is only for that round uh, sorry for that that player's turn as soon as we move to the next player's turn the template is auto deleted that's what we want uh, and then we've got Zana who actually is dead now it's not automatically applied that condition but we can do that or rather at least unconscious okay so there's lots of things here that work really well for us so we've been through a fair few bits on here. Um, told you it's a biggie, but it's very promising, isn't it? When we're using this combined, the Monk's Token Bar, which is adding some additional uh, stuff down here. We look at Monk's Token Bar separately on its own because it's also doing some stuff down in the middle here, right at the very, very bottom um, that we've not looked at um, and some other factors and, and stuff like that. Um, we know convenient effects. Um, and we've not really looked at token magic on its own either because actually it's intertwined with what we're doing with um, the quality of life, the MIDI QOL. Really promising though. We've got some good spell casting templates disappearing after the spell effect ends, which is perfect for if you've got a druid in the party, you know that they just cast Entangle all day, every day, because you'd be an idiot not to. It's an amazing spell. So powerful. Um, so they're going to be putting out that template every time, so we can automate that. Oh, beautiful stuff. Um, it's one of the things in um, in Above VTT, the free Chrome extension, that I found very frustrating was putting down templates for spells and getting rid of them. Um, it, it's it's not easy to do. It's it just It's administratively burdensome let's use that phrase shall we um, but this with midi qol yeah it's easy once i worked out how to rotate the damn thing silly boy uh, let me know in the comments what you think are you using this already or have you been you're probably not using it at the moment because some of the the update changes and issues that there have been um yeah let us know what you think uh we've got plenty more playing to do with this plenty more things to test 
um, and we need to certainly check a lot of those spells, work out some of those settings that we're not particularly happy with. Like I say, it's going to be a complex one. I think it's going to be one we're going to do, end up doing a more than one video on just having a play with it and playing with settings and things and then having a summary one where we go, these are the settings that work for me that I think gives the best experience for the players and for the DM by automating as much as possible without taking the flavour away from the, the actual game experience. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate you joining me on this journey. It's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Take care.